It's finally the month of May. We made it. How's it going, everyone? I'm David Hoffman for Behind the Catch Fence. Guess what? The Indianapolis 500 is this month. Just crazy to say that after so much buildup, so much anticipation, it's finally here. Well, we wanted to give you a little preview of what to expect this month from us. I mean, we'll have plenty of interviews starting this week with one of the racing's top starters of all time. Make sure to stay tuned for that. It's gonna be crazy. And of course, we'll be talking about Kyle Larson and his progress throughout the month. And we'll have an Indy 500 preview show where we make our predictions on who is going to win the greatest spectacle in racing. We'll be joined by Ryan Marine of IndyCar Radio for that one. So before that happens, we figured why not give you all a taste of what's to come. So to start off and get our feet wet a little bit, do you remember your first time going to Indy? The feeling, the excitement, the rush, the history about it. Here's two-time Indy 500 winner Takuma Sato as he talks about his first impressions of Indy. When I had opportunity 2009, okay, let's go to the Indiana place. And at the time, I'm, I, I, I gone back to the Indy, of course, because I visited there for the Formula One, but the first time for the Indy 500 qualifying day, bump day actually. And then I was standing on the infield in inside of a town one coming the car screaming over 220 miles per hour that speed it really didn't surprise me because if you go to the monza you can click in similar speed but what really surprised me was the cars get into the corner that speed so the driver kept on the foot and throttle and then so because of the inside and you you can and then banking so you can feel the cars coming towards to you and then you can see the cockpit and by the apex the driver actually starting to Sliding off a little bit and then correcting, still kept on the throttle, and then cars beautifully widening and emerging on the exit uh, side, uh, side wall, the uh, the uh, the safer barrier, you know, for the concrete wall, where is relatively fast still, two two hundred fifteen ten miles per hour ish, and that was just unbelievable experience. That was like a shocking moment, similar to that uh, age of ten I had it in Suzuka, very similar. So then I immediately wanted to do it. It, it. it kind of scary to look at it, but I really interested. That was the first time. 2016 Indy 500 poll winner and current NBC analyst James Hinchcliffe has his own unique story at Indy. We'll get into the, his near-death experience and triumph one year later in another episode, but here's his thoughts on his first time at the Brickyard. Yeah, you know, it's it's it was interesting, you know, looking back on it in a lot of ways because... Indy does get built up so much because it is so big, you know, and, and I think in my rookie year, I came in very prepared. I, you know, my team did an incredible job at, at getting me ready for what I was going to experience. But at the same time, there seems to be just, just so much more. I mean, maybe, maybe I wasn't going to say pressure, but maybe, maybe it is pressure just because it's Indianapolis. And, you know, I mean, hitting the wall at Indy is just as bad for the race car as hitting the wall at Milwaukee, but they don't freak you out like they do, you know, at Indy when you go to Milwaukee. So you kind of get in your own head a little bit. And I think it's important for, uh, for rookies when they go to the Speedway to try to treat it as any other track, you know, tr try to approach it as any other race weekend. Because uh, it's very easy to not do that and get kind of roped into, uh, you know, some of the some of the, the folklore and, and and all the, the pageantry surrounding it and, and build up expectations in a way. Like I remember, so I crashed in my first race uh, yeah. at Indy, and I remember the feeling was just awful. I mean, it sucks to go out of any race, but for some reason that one. It was the first time in my career I was ever like physically looking at the steering wheel for the reset button. You know, I was just like, no, no, that can't happen here. That's not what's supposed to happen here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was that was kind of one of the big the big challenges showing up there for the first time. Now, what about the Indiana native Connor Daly? I mean, he's practically lived at the Speedway his whole life. Take a look at his thoughts. Well, I mean, I was always there, uh, you know, every every day of my life, uh, you know, in the month of May was at the racetrack. So I spent. Every day after school there, you know, we I, I'd, I'd go from elementary school, middle school, high school. Every day that I didn't have a car, you know, when I wasn't old enough to drive, you know, my, my mom was working at the track. So my, my grandma or someone else would have to pick us up from school and uh, and go out to the track because I wanted to, I wanted to be there for practice and, and whatever I could see. So uh, it was just such a such a, uh, a, an important part of my life growing up because it was it was family history it was tradition um, 
and it was just so fun for me. I, I, I truly enjoyed being at IndyCar races in general, but the Indy 500 in particular was it was such a big and special month. So, I mean, I, I, I can't nail it down to one thing. I thought seeing, you know, seeing new winners was always really cool for me. Seeing people who hadn't won before, seeing that emotion um, was really, really cool. Uh, and, and being there for so many historic moments, uh, you know, was, was was pretty awesome as well. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. Make sure to stay tuned. We have some big time guests coming up on the show here over the next few weeks. So stay tuned. Now, if you're wanting to see more motorsports content, like this video and subscribe. We got you covered for all things racing. And make sure to go follow this podcast on X and Instagram at Behind Catch as well. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later.